Hi guys, welcome back. I made it all the way up here from all the way down there. I'm no longer a paladin on the outside, but always a paladin on the inside. I'm here with <laughs> the crew, the Waffle Crew. Um, we just played a game of Dice Camera Action, and I am perhaps understandably discombobulated after mm. that ending, Chris. Yeah, we kind of we left things in a, a weird way for your character. Chris kept giving me this this look <laughs> leading up. He's like, was, yeah, you're, you're going to have some, some challenges. To, yeah. Yeah, there's going to be some challenges coming up for your character. What a jerk. I, say, well, <laughs> I know. And I, we actually get this whole 15 minutes just to kind of talk about what it's like to be on Dice Camera Action. Nice. Answer some questions that people commonly have about Dice Camera Action and just kind awesome. of... So we don't have to be out. nervous. We can just be ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> totally. Okay, good. Yeah. And I, I mean, first and foremost, I kind of wanted to... We went straight into our game, but we didn't yeah. get to talk about the stream of Annihilation with you guys or anything. So what are your first impressions of being here for a stream of 24 hours of D&D? &D? This is way fancier than I thought it was going to be. Really? I was like, oh, we're just playing D&D. &D. So I was expecting like someone's house with an actual like just kitchen <laughs> table stream set up rather than an actual production in a really awesome set. I keep I keep looking at all the weapons on this set. Yeah. Because like, there's like axes and swords hanging up, and there's like a, just a closet with spears yeah. right yeah. next to it. It's also really well decorated, yeah, too. Great. It's not just like the axes and swords that line like the corner of my living room. Right. It's like they're well, they're well produced. They're live goldfish. <laughs> Yeah, I yeah. know they're real goldfish. I, I don't know if you guys either. saw that, but there are real goldfish there. And there's a reason why the goldfish are here, but that won't become apparent until tomorrow. Really? What? Yeah. yeah. There's what actually, real there's, reason? There's, there's a story reason why we brought goldfish on the set. <laughs> That's amazing. Wow. That's I mean, amazing. and I was looking at that living room, because a lot of times in production design, we talk about, like, yeah, make it feel like a living room. Make it, But when you say make it feel like a living room, a lot of times it doesn't actually feel like a living room. This is... It feels like yeah. being, you know, under the stairs in the living room, except that no one would ever let me put up that many weapons and D&D &D <laughs> memorabilia in the living room. Uh, you haven't seen mine, my living room? <laughs> I have, <laughs> and I'm <laughs> jealous of it. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. Did you, were you involved in the preparation for the Stream of Annihilation? Did you have any special requests for the decor? No, I was not involved at all. Oh, really? No, not oh. at all. I was actually, I've been very, very busy working on the RPG product, Tomb oh. of Annihilation. Yeah. Uh, which is wrapping up uh, even as we speak. Oh, well, very cool. Yep. It's going to go off to the printer soon, and I won't see it again until everybody else does. Oh, it's so exciting. We're yeah. all really excited about that. And, of course, we were excited to play in person. People get to watch us usually on stream. Mm -hmm. How does it differ playing live in person for you guys? Jared can see my dice rolls. Yeah. <laughs> I try not to. I try to, like, casually look away. But when you did the fireballs, I was like, miss, miss, ha, ah, miss. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the big thing I noticed is that... Um, we have a lot better uh, just kind of like comedic chemistry when we're actually live next to each other because then we can clearly like look at each other and be like, Meh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, just right. helping, having that kind of interaction when actually next to each other helps a uh, lot compared to an I'm a big fan of sarcastic looks. Yeah. <laughs> just like general <laughs> yeah. side-eyeing. Yes. Yeah. So I feel like that's a lot easier in person. Mm -hmm. But amazingly, I feel like, it's, like I feel immersed just as much. Right. Like in, per like in person or online. Yeah. It's, you know. It's just awesome. <laughs> All of our costumes are awesome, but even uh, just online, like we just so get into our characters and the storyline that Chris has been developing. That's just, mm -hmm. I'm so into it. Yeah. 51 episodes in, I'm like, okay, let's go. I'm ready. Yeah, it seems to move along at a brisk pace too. Yeah. We don't spend too long in any one. Right. Room. And this was a, even a shorter stream, but we still had so much happen. Yeah. Yes. Uh, compared to any other episode. Yeah. I found it really interesting. You were mentioning those looks. It's like I'm so used to, I have one point of vision for all of you. Like if I want to look at any of you, it's my little webcam usually. Right, and so true. all of a sudden I have this way broader palette of like, where do I direct my attention or <laughs> acting or whatever I'm doing? Yeah. It was like almost um, unnerving at first of like, oh, I have so many different places to look. Because usually I have to look into the webcam and be like, now Evelyn is talking to Strix. Or like, now mm -hmm. Evelyn is talking to Diaz. But I can just look at either one of you. And that was mm -hmm. really cool. And you got to see firsthand how bad my sneak attack rolls are. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I was like, oh, Diaz complaining again. But really, yeah, no they were really yeah. bad. <laughs> they were, Every time. When you see them laid out like that, it is very disheartening. Yeah. <laughs> So tell us a little bit about how we're going to transition from Storm King's Thunder to Tomb of Annihilation. If we make it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If, if. Always a big I mean, if, Evelyn's dead already, basically. Yeah. So, no, I'm just kidding. Shh, it's right. okay. <laughs> <laughs> we shall see. Uh, so we have got about nine or so episodes left of the second season, of the Storm King's Thunder uh -huh. season. And those are going to be a blend of stuff having to do with giants and themes and stuff from the next story. Mm -hmm. So over the, over the next nine episodes, 
uh, a giant of annihilation is going to show up? <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Maybe. Uh, some, some, uh, at least one special guest star is going to be playing an NPC who's actually in the Tomb of Annihilation story, oh. but sort of intruding on the giant story. Nice. And some other themes that are in the, in the Tomb of Annihilation, I've just sort of repurposed and reused in a different way. Mm -hmm. So you're going to see them much sooner than you would in the normal story. And it's going to serve to create what's basically a smooth transition. Um, cool. It's almost like you're not going to be able to tell when one story ends and the next one begins until we change the animated intro. Oh. And then yeah. people will know we're, we're firmly in season three. That's when you really know. Exactly. Well, you're kind of a, a role model DM. And so when people watch you playing these different modules, they're kind of drawing inspiration from you. You're you know, really weaving them together and, and doing them in the order that they come out. What do you want people to be inspired to do from what you're doing? What do you want people to notice about what you're doing as a DM? Um, what I try to do is to keep it as simple as possible. Like, I'm a low-tech guy. Mm. So my focus is on just trying to tell a story and make sure that every character at the table, virtual table or real table, is doing something interesting that session or has mm. a good moment that they can remember back fondly um, for a week before they show up again. Uh, and or, or not fondly. Yeah. Right. So <laughs> they can but wake my, up my goal, night is, cold my goal is, is, that, is to make DMing seem as easy as possible. So I tend to dispense with a lot of toys and, and flashy stuff and just go straight to the storytelling, mm. the narrative, and trying to help the characters get to interesting places and make some interesting decisions. Uh, and uh, I figure that people can watch that and say, oh, I don't need you know, a big budget special effects, or I don't need to buy a flying ship or a, a big mountain display or mm -hmm. create something that's going to take me 16 hours. I can just sit down at a table and start playing. Mm. Yeah, that's totally true. Yeah. When you say dispense with the toys, do you mean the physical things, or do you also mean kind of the mechanics in the game that sometimes Often you... Often the mechanics in the game, if they get in the way, I'll brush them aside. Um, I know that there are, there are tools out there, that digital tools that you can use to aid your game experience or to track your campaign. I tend to dispense with all of that and just hmm. try to keep it as pure and as simple and as cheap as possible. So it's about what works for you. Right. But in a, in a different forum, I don't have any adversity. I'm not adverse to using that stuff. Like, I'm certainly in the big I've, live shows on stage. We've all seen Acquisitions when you, Incorporated. Yeah, exactly. When you want to see the more theatrical stuff, I'm all about spending Watsi's money <laughs> on monumental displays right, and yeah. huge dioramas and ridiculous yeah, I mean, costumes. If they give you a budget, use it. Exactly. Right. Totally. Uh, but, but for me, it, it's all about the shared storytelling at its heart. And this is a very down-to-earth kind of game that we have, I think, with characters who are relatable. And I don't want anything to get in the way of showing off the characters. Speaking of the characters, I know that Holly and Jared, you guys actually play offline as well. And yeah. I'm really fascinated by the idea of the difference between playing D&D &D for entertainment and playing D&D &D just for fun at home. Are there any differences that you guys can tell people who might not do both? It's really weird because what I really like about Dice Camera Action is that we are very much just a lot of people just trying to play D&D &D and not necessarily trying to put on a show. Mm. Like Acquisitions Incorporated is an amazing show. Like they produce it like a show, whereas mm -hmm. we're just four people, four or five people trying to play D&D. &D. So even at our games at home, mm. where Holly's a DM right now, mm -hmm. uh, that one's like a lot more loose and wacky. Um, <laughs> don't even get me started. Yeah. Wasn't there like gorillas involved? Yeah, there was gorillas in a bedroom, and it's let's just not go there. <laughs> but they had a good time, and that's what I learned from you is to make sure that everyone has a good time, mm. and that's like I think the most important thing. Like, and I get like way too wrapped up into having like little like gimmicks. Like, I made a menu for this restaurant in Sigel. You want to read it? <laughs> I'm just like. I get too like wrapped up in that stuff, so I'm still getting better at it. But like, I feel like every time we play our game, like I always learn more from playing with you guys, and it's it's it makes me a better DM too, and from Jared's DMing too, and I learn from him too. So it's it's a whole community of learning. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I love the stuff that even on stream you sometimes make pieces or like you made the That's right, Mr. the murder Shamble puppet, face. yeah, <laughs> Mr. Shamble face. I so. love that stuff. I love bringing in physical objects. Mm -hmm. Like every time Strix gets something, I add it to the costume. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and I love that. And it kind of reminds me too of how much fan art and mm -hmm. some really amazing yeah. cosplay and things that have been done around our show, which to me is one of the most. I'm the most honored about that, the fact that someone would be inspired creatively to make something that's related to our characters. I and I, I had a cat cosplay. Strength. I know! A cat cosplay, cosplay, so cosplay cool. strength. And that was like she the was, best uh, thing in the world. He was here in the chat earlier. I, know, I don't know if he's still cosplay. here, but cat cosplay is we awesome. We love you! Yeah. So I was curious, were there any, and actually, Chris, I talked to the, these guys a lot about it, but have there been any cool creations from the, the Waffle fam, if you will, that have really stuck out to you, or any types that you like? Well, there was one 
for the uh, remember TwitchCon last year? Mm -hmm. We got those little clay figurines oh, of yeah. all of our characters. That was so cool. Those were really cute. Those were really awesome because they were a complete set, right? Mm -hmm. And we all got to sort of walk away yeah. with our own. Uh, but they kept they sort of captured the spirit, yeah. I think, of the fan base perfectly. Mm -hmm. We each got these little icons, mm -hmm. um, and they're they're adorable. I mean, mine looks just like me. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You had kind of like the yeah. you had like a. Table. I had an open uh, DM's book with right. some dice mm -hmm. on it. That's awesome. Yeah. I saw a comment on one of our videos that said, um, like, Waffle Crew trapping great evil and knickknacks since 2016. <laughs> so, that's like, really little knickknacks are perfect for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any that's particularly stand out to you guys? Uh, I mean, I, I see all the art. Like, I actively go and find it. Oh, yeah. Like, low key is. Like, I'm well, do you remember the, you remember the, uh, somebody did a little pencil animated intro? Oh, yeah. right. That one you was very are, You guys cool. are running along, and then at yeah. the very end, you trip, and everybody falls on, and, but, except for you, but you mm -hmm. throw yourself on the pile just, just like to be part of the game. Yay! Yeah, yeah, that was I adorable, that. perfectly in character. That yeah. was so good. So yeah. good. Yeah, someone did a really cool uh, tarot card of the hang. That was the hanged yes. man yeah, of Dia. That, that one was, was, that was like super reaching cool. out for his keys while like, the noose is around yeah. his neck. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, actually, from that fan art, where I actually took the uh, amethyst around my neck from that artist. Because okay. that, that wasn't something I originally had for my character, but I just saw that. It's like, oh, I like that, so I took it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> nice. And now I well, wear that with my costume. Yeah, it actually reminds me, because we, we all got the chance to go to the Ren Fair together, and yeah. you were looking for an amethyst there. And it was really cool to kind of be able to even take the characters out of the game and take them to a Ren Fair and sometimes drop into role-playing and drop out. And I spent a lot of time thinking about how, as a kid, I loved pretending. I loved, you know, putting on plays or, or doing that kind of stuff. And getting to do that as an adult is something I never thought I'd get to do. And so for people who may not play D&D &D yet or may not be involved that deeply in something like this, would you guys have any kind of suggestions of where should you start if you're like, oh, I'd love to do that, but it's still kind of scary for me or I don't know where to start or find people? Chris, do you have any advice for them? Uh, one way is to go try to find an Adventurers League game mm. at a store. Mm. Uh, Adventurers League is a program that Wizards supports uh, where uh, essentially adventure content uh, is shared. DMs can run it as they will and it gets you into your game store, it gets you to meet people who live near you. Great way to start up new friendships, lifelong friendships potentially, mm -hmm. and sort of get a feel, even if you're not all that well versed in the game, it doesn't really matter. You can just jump in with a character and play and kind of learn as you go. Mm -hmm. Any yeah. tips from you guys? Yeah, and don't stress out about like all of the math and stuff. I mean, I've been playing this game since I was in middle school, and I still can't remember like yeah. how many dice to roll. Yeah, and it's just because I'm I just forget because mm -hmm. I'm like too excited about saying something or doing whatever, mm -hmm. and and it doesn't matter as long as you're having fun. And usually, everyone at the table, like even when I'm DMing, like Jared is there like, co DMing with me to like mm -hmm. help me out with the rules, and like we all just help each other. So don't yeah. don't be stressed out. It it's not like. Some people are bad at math, man. It's yeah. <laughs> Frankly, it's kind of a DM's dream not to have players who are so obs so obsessed about <laughs> right. making sure right. the rules work exactly right. right. Yeah, as long as I look cool. Yeah. I'm fine. <laughs> as long as you haven't got like a sock stuck to your head. Or something. Yeah. As long as I cast a fireball, that works. Something. Yeah. Oh, there's there's one in here somewhere. Yeah. Any from you? Uh, my only one would be because I know a lot of people are get, are scared mm. of starting because mm. it can be kind of intimidating, but. Everyone at some point started off being that person like, I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to role play. It's just something you kind of get into. So mm -hmm. everyone's been there. Everyone started at that point, And we all just got to here from playing. It's getting more comfortable yeah. doing it. So Absolutely. if you just show up and all you want to do is throw a couple of magic missiles. And then from there, you're like, oh, wait. I have a character, and then I can actually develop it from there. You absolutely can. Yeah. yeah. You can also just let your character develop over time. You don't have to have it all figured out at the beginning. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, for sure. Yeah. I mean, I, I know all of ours have completely changed yeah. from when Dice Camera Action started. That was going to be one of my follow-up questions, actually, is is there any marked difference that you would bring up that, that your character has really changed, Jared? I mean, I died. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that was a thing. <laughs> yes. I like how dying didn't really affect Strix. She was just like, oh, another plane, cool. All right, <laughs> <laughs> everything's fine. Have you Eating the owl bear was messed up, though. Oh. <laughs> um, no, I've, I've just sort of admired how the group uh, has kind of brought out certain elements of each other, like when you guys are working as a team, seeing how that works out. Um, uh, I like that uh, 
there's like, for instance, one example that springs to mind is I, Evelyn's sort of teasing at this kind of deeper friendship mm -hmm. with some of the characters, like Paulton, her relationship is changing slightly and she will blurt out things like, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Paulton hasn't picked up on it yet, but there, there's like hints of things that could happen in the future and I think mm -hmm. the fans love it and I certainly love it. It's like, well, you know, if this were to be go to its natural conclusion, mm -hmm. this could be, you know, these two characters could be in a completely different place by the end of the campaign. I even argue just recently, just based off uh, some very recent sessions, I am personally am making DF go through some very yeah. personal changes. Yeah, you just incinerated a bunch of people. <laughs> Thank right? you, Chris. So that's gonna, <laughs> yes. that's gonna scar. You sure did. <laughs> yeah. Well aware. I'm sure and that will come up again. They're also in cages. Yep, thank you. Yeah. They were helpless, yep. yes. It's I heard really, all of their screams. Yeah. Thank you. It's really funny because I think our characters do have some very deep-seated things emotionally, like relationships as yes. well as personally, that like our show is very much comedic. You know, we're really looking for like the funny scenes. Well, but they then, watch us fail a lot. Right. Yeah. Oh, we just roll sure. once so yeah. often. But underneath that, yeah. you're saying yes. there's something else. There's there like a deeper is. level of insecurity mm -hmm. that people can relate to and makes the characters feel more real. Mm -hmm. I'd say I kind of see us as like the Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's like yeah. we're like funny and everything, but like underneath there's like a deeper message and like the, it's the, the things that we're exploring like with our characters are things that people can relate to on a deeper level. So, mm -hmm. Well, I could talk to you guys about Dexter Interaction <laughs> yeah, all day. I feel like I should at least spoil one thing. Okay, oh, yeah, we're already over, so you have to go right. quick. Spoil okay, it, quick. Just a very, very quick thing. Um, uh, Dieth is going to inherit something. Ooh. Man, he's just no. dropping all sorts of bombs on us no. today. All right, well, we'll like, see you. Oh, cool, fun treasure. No, it's going to be like another curse. I know, <laughs> that's exactly what I thought. Right. Well, find us on the Dice Camera Action subreddit. Tell us what you think that he's going to inherit. We will have our own theories. Thank you guys so much. I will see you again soon, and we're going to get right into our next game now. Bye. Bye.